Hello and welcome to GCSE Geography Learning from Home. This session is going to be looking at topic three, which is ecosystems, biodiversity and management. And this is the very first session, which is looking at world ecosystems. Uh, more specifically, where are they? So we're going to be knowing the names and locations of the world's large scale ecosystems or biomes, um, and hopefully be able to describe their location like an exam ready student. So we're going to give, uh, have a detailed description of the different biomes and their locations globally. So to start with, we've got a few dingbats for you just for a bit of fun. So have a little look at the screen um, and say what you see, essentially. This first one, I'll tell you how to do it. And then for the others, I will pause the screen to give you an opportunity to have a little guess just for a bit of fun, really. Um, uh, this one is boreal forest. So it's got a ball here. OK, this is a reel for a fishing rod. This is the number four and this is someone having a rest. So boreal forest. And this is one of the ecosystems we're going to be looking at today. So boreal forest is characterized by these conifer trees, these lovely Christmas tree looking things. And you can see it's in kind of a mountainous alpine region, very thin, rocky, acidic soils, quite cold. OK, so that is boreal forest. OK, ready? The next one I'm going to put on the thing, pause the screen. And then after about three seconds, I'm going to carry on and give you the answer. All right, so this one is tundra. Okay, so tundra is this environment. This is where you've got these typically kind of um, lichens, mosses, kind of maybe low to the ground shrubs in permafrost conditions. Very, very cold. You'd find this up near the Arctic Circle or the very south of the world. Um, not very productive biomes, not very uh, much vegetation or life there at all. This would also, this would be in the summertime when it's got the most vegetation and you can't see any trees at all. OK, the next one. This one is tropical grassland. All right. So there you go. Um, better known as savanna, uh, just like you'd find in The Lion King. If you've not watched it, watch it. It's great. Um, these are typically um, grasslands, so dominated by grass. You can see these kind of wispy looking grasses here with a few trees, thorny trees, often uh, quite hardy trees. Um, and they're found between the tropics, hence why this word tropical appears. So anything that says tropical occurs between the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn. So just a bit north and south of the equator. OK, this one is temperate grassland. OK, so just like the tropical grassland, it's dominated by grasses as their main vegetation type. Again, some trees in there. You can see these sort of conifer trees in the background here, um, but dominated by grassland. But rather than being tropical grassland, therefore between the tropics, this is actually a bit further north or south of the uh, lines of Capricorn or Cancer. And it's in the temperate regions. So it's not as far north as the tundra. Um, it's kind of in between the two. The UK, for example, is in a temperate zone, but the UK doesn't really have much temperate grassland. It's mainly temperate woodland. OK, this is a nice easy one. Hopefully you've spotted these are deserts. And if you take one of the S's away, you get deserts. Another large scale ecosystem and we know what deserts are like. They're characterized by these large, li largely lifeless kind of dune areas. Um, but deserts can take a number of forms. This is just probably the most well known with the uh, camels there trailing there. OK, uh, another one. OK, this one is tropical rainforest. And again, tropical means it occurs between the tropics. Often it'll occur on or around the equator called equatorial rainforest, um, very stable conditions, very hot, very humid, very wet all year round and incredibly productive. So loads and loads of vegetation, lots of animals, the most diverse parts of the world, the tropical rainforests. OK, these ones are deciduous forests. OK, now these ones we would be um, familiar with because they are what we find as our main biome ecosystem where we live. So deciduous forests or temperate forests because they occur in the temperate region. Um, they are different from tropical forests because they tend to lose their leaves and they have four distinct seasons. So you've got your um, your spring or your summer, your autumn, your winter time uh, where the different sort of environments occur. Um, sorry, the different seasons occur for these particular um, ecosystems. So this is what you'd find if you went to somewhere like Foxley Wood or local park, um, as long as it's got these broad-leaved deciduous trees. 
if it's got coniferous trees, so evergreen ones that look like Christmas trees, then it's likely, especially in this area, that it's been planted. So Thetford Forest, for example, is a completely artificial woodland. It's been planted for the timber industry. But naturally occurring woodlands like Foxley Wood, just down the road from us here in Reefham, um, is a deciduous forest. Okay, so a definition to begin with. With the start of any topic, it's just good to get some of the definitions for some of the new words written down. So in this case, what I'd like you to do, please, is write down the definition for what an ecosystem is. So a community of living or biotic and non-living abiotic things that work together. Ecosystems have no particular size, but we divide them into different scales. So, for example, the biggest ecosystem that we're familiar with um, is the Earth itself. It's all the living things on Earth that survive in the non-living parts of so the air, the water, the land, etc. Um, whereas ecosystems can also be as small as a puddle because the water itself is the non-living or abiotic part and things like uh, mosquito larva will live within the water as the abiotic or the living, sorry, the biotic or the living part of that ecosystem. Your head, for example, can be an ecosystem if you've got skin lice and nits or you know anything like that, which I know sounds a bit gross, but there we go. Um, they can survive and thrive on the non-living or abiotic environment that is your head and your hair. Okay, so we're going to look at two kind of main branches of ecosystems, large scale ones, which are called biomes, and that's the dingbats we've just gone through, the tundra, the desert, the tropical rainforest, etc. Then we're going to go into more small scale UK ecosystems. So looking at moorlands, heathland, woodland and wetlands. So going, you know, bringing the scale down a little bit. And then we'll go back to these biomes. We're going to look at lots of depth at two of them in particular, tropical rainforests and deciduous forests, the ones that we would find in the UK particularly. And with each of these, there is a case study involved. So the tropical rainforests, we look at the Amazon, and deciduous forests, we look at the new forest. Okay, so um, the task that's uh, afforded to you, the, the uh, timings here are just sort of rough guideline timings, but if you get yourself onto uh, the SharePoint area of Office 365, you will find the handouts available um, there. What um, is available is a colour by numbers map essentially where the numbers um, tell you what colour or tell you what environment you're looking at and you need to just colour code each number one the same colour as any other number one number two all the same colour number three etc okay now there are also instructions on the handout of telling you how to colour it in um, but you may also want to be looking at a world map or having one handy to complete the um, the task this is some classic geography to get you started, a good bit of old fashioned coloring in, um, but there are some other tasks to do. So if you've done the coloring in, you then look forward um, to the next task, which is to just divide up the grassland into temperate grassland and tropical grassland. Um, so changing the temperate and tropical grassland, making sure there's a distinction between the two, because the color by numbers map I've given you doesn't, put a distingu uh, doesn't distinguish between the two types of grassland. And then I'd like you to add the two main, or the main lines, sorry, not the two, the main lines of latitude. Okay, so the map on the next slide will give you those main lines of latitude for you to add. And then using those, I would like you to produce an exam style descriptive answer using things like lines of latitude as your reference points. Okay, so it will all become clear soon, but these essentially are the tasks you need to complete to complete this session. Okay, so to give you a bit of uh, help, okay, you might want to pause the screen now, by the way, just to complete the first color coding activity. I imagine that will take you at least 15 minutes. If you're being super neat, it might even take you up to half an hour, uh, but please don't waste time and go beyond that time because it is just coloring in. There's not a lot of educational value to it other than to tell you where the different biomes are located globally. Okay, so hopefully you've done the coloring and now you've unpaused the screen. Um, to add the temperate grassland and tropical grassland, you might want to use this map if you haven't yet found it for yourselves. So the, um, this map that I got, which is different to the color by numbers one, it's actually defined the two different grasslands. The temperate grassland, which are the colder ones, um, are these kind of light or darker peachy colors. Um, again, just be rough. You don't have to put it exactly as these are, but there's just sort of a little couple of patches in North America here, and then quite a large sort of swathe that goes across large parts of Asia there. Um, you've also got a couple of small patches, just one here, just um, north of uh, South, or just in the northern part of Southern, South Africa, Southern Africa, and then in the sort of 
southeastern part of South America there there's another patch so this is where you should put your kind of crisscrossed lines um, whereas the savanna which is the white sections here they can just stay as normal grassland you can see they're generally next to each other except in the northern hemisphere okay so that's question two done hopefully you've managed to do that if you're not yet finished then again pause the screen that's the beauty of these um, these online online sessions you can pause it whenever you need to catch up and then I'm going to show you the lines of latitude on the next slide okay so here they are these are the main lines of latitude most of us I would say probably all of us know about the equator that runs through the middle of the earth and the equator is at zero degrees whenever we're talking about the location of things in degrees we tend to say zero degrees is the equator when it comes to latitude um, when it comes to longitude zero degrees interestingly enough is this light blue line you can go down here this is the Greenwich prime meridian line because it runs through um, Greenwich in London um, in the UK there so everything on this line is zero degrees longitude but don't worry about that for now we're just focusing on latitude really now so latitude equator zero degrees the Tropic of Cancer is 23.5 degrees north of the equator and the Tropic of Capricorn is 23.5 degrees south of the equator now these are known together as the tropics so if you find yourself on holiday or in an environment more explicitly or sorry, more specifically anywhere between those two lines you could say you are in a tropical location because that's why we call it tropical because it's between the tropics so in this area here all of this area is where you'd find your tropical grassland savannah your tropical rainforest um, and things like deserts also occur around these lines so they're important marker points then in between those lines okay so between the Tropic of Cancer and the Antarctic Circle which is super cold these are your temperate regions so this is temperate region all through here and up here these are also your temperate regions so you've got your Tropic of Cancer and the Arctic Circle and then everything else in between here is where you'll find your um, tropical sorry your temperate grasslands and your temperate or deciduous forests um, as well as other environments uh, for example the um, uh, boreal forests will also occur sort of the more northern reaches or mountainous parts of the temperate areas and then lastly where you'd find um, more boreal forest but mainly tundra is anywhere within the arctic circle and anywhere within the antarctic circle and the sort of around along that borderline there okay so this that's why those lines of latitude are so important because the tropical areas tell you where some of the environments will be the temperate areas which occur between those areas and then you've got your tundras that will occur in the most extreme north and southerly regions okay so hopefully your map now has those lines as accurately as possible um, drawn with a ruler on top of them and labeled okay now the last part is to answer the exam question which appears on the handout which is essentially just getting you to use your knowledge about firstly locations um, um, a continent so South America North America Africa Europe um, Asia Oceania um, using those particular reference points but also trying to use and get used to these lines of latitude to help describe where you would find the different biomes that occur so again hopefully um, using these terms will get you a GCSE standard answer because you should really be aware of where the Tropic of Cancer is roughly and where the Tropic of Capricorn and Equator and Arctic and Antarctic Circle are roughly you won't need to know exactly you won't necessarily have to draw them on a map but knowing that tropical rainforests occur in this region is definitely worth knowing because it will help you answer exam questions in future with a really good description okay so quote latitudes quote continents quote countries if you know them and any other information to really describe where you would find these different biomes um, so that is the final task just do that and again spend 10 minutes just getting a really good description where you've used at least a couple of lines of latitude and you've mentioned at least two or three preferably four or five of the different biomes that you've been introduced today okay now the final activity is just to test your knowledge so once you've completed that unpause the screen and then you can take part in the sort of final activity which you would be doing if you were in lessons in school so here we go what I'd like you to do is from the picture 
don't write on a whiteboard. You can just shout at the screen as much as you want or as loud or as quietly as you want um, and try and tell me if you can remember which of the biomes the picture relates to. Okay, this one is temperate or deciduous woodland. This one is tropical grassland or savanna. This one is boreal forest. This one, hopefully you got this one nice and easy, is desert. This one is tundra. This one is temperate grassland. And the final one is tropical rainforest. Okay, well, that's the end of this first session. It's a nice, straightforward, easy one with lots and lots of stuff um, to, of colouring in to do just to ease you in slowly into this topic. Um, and we'll be going into more depth about where these biomes are located and why they are located there more specifically in the next session. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.